over 300 centers across the world hospitals schools colleges university across india we are there in the education field for more than 50 years get the guidance and support of a galaxy of experienced former bureaucrats academicians and leaders in various arenas in the former except guest lecturers within a limited time you need to have structured learning that you always get from the ias academy so when you get a personal attention when you get a personal teacher you always get motivated third important benefit is the test and evaluation the test and evaluation is like being an expert that is your expert teacher would know that what kind of a question would be asked in your prelims as well as mains so whenever you write a examination and test your teacher would evaluate and they will tune you how to present your answer in the examinations because they keep on researching on the the particular examination year by year they know the trend and everything so when you choose your right mentor they will properly guide you until your interview stage and when you'll come with the flying colors candidates who clear upsc civil services examination will be provided with a service as well as a cat so it is purely based on the marks you score services what you are going to do ias ips ifs likewise the service are categorized cadre is where you are going to do where you are going to work so it may be any state or any particular zone which have been decided by upsc so it is important for the candidates to choose or score better marks to achieve the desired service and the desired cadre there are approximately 23 services for which civil services examination conducts examination to select to select people this is what people think but in real there are 54 services the top creamy services are ias ips and ifs we at chinmaya ias academy understand the structure of the upsc civil services examination we at chinmaya ias academy understand the structure of the upsc civil services examination need of our students well and give them personalized attention We implement proven strategies to help our students face the exams with confidence. Highlights of our offline course include limited number of students per class, direct engagement, individual mentor support, expert guidance, consistent interaction, updated course, study materials, result-oriented coaching and training, daily tests and doubt clarification sessions and research materials. You need to get into an institute like ours to hone in your skills, to understand your strengths and weaknesses, so that you can build on your strengths and take proactive steps to tide over your weak spots. Chinmaya IAS Academy is equipped with good infrastructure that is complemented by goal-oriented teaching methodologies and interactive training materials like videos and presentations. Apart from IAS coaching, our youth empowerment sessions, key to success program, help the students to manage their stress, manage their time to deal with the emotions, inculcate the leadership qualities in them. We impart a sense of Indian knowledge and traditions of our culture. Chinmaya IAS Academy, empowering minds to lead and serve. we can begin ma'am okay yeah, i was not able to see mr jagadishwaran sorry so a uh, very good morning to all our panelists and all those who have tuned in to today's webinar on decoding ias conquer the exam achieve your dream as part of the career counseling uh, series of the hindu education plus the webinar brought to you by the chinmaya academy for civil services a unit of chinmaya mission today has a stellar panel of speakers Every year lakhs of dreams are fulfilled and lakhs of dreams are also shattered and yet a hope drives the dream in many to become a powerful and authoritative government officer and in particular an IAS officer the civil services exam is not insur insurmountable but it requires a special kind of preparation and strategy perhaps 
So I would quickly introduce the speakers today so that we can pack in maximum inputs from them on how to prepare for the UPSC exams that is dubbed as the toughest exam in the country by the majority, given perhaps its mammoth syllabus and less than one, less than one pass percentage. I mean, you can gauge yourself. More than 13 lakh candidates wrote the prelims in 2022. Of them, 14600 <clears throat> qualified for the mains and 180 got selected into IES and another 750 in all other services combined. Our speakers today span six decades of experience and, and wisdom, and I'm sure the discussion will have plenty of takeaways. So we, right now we have two of them with us and Mr. Gagandeep Bedi will join us a little later. So first, let me have the privilege of introducing Mr. N. Gopalaswamy. He's, of course, a very well-known name and face. Uh, Mr. Gopalaswamy served as the 15th Chief Election Commissioner of India from 30th June 2006 to April 2009. A 1966 patch IS officer belonging to the Gujarat cadre, he held key posts in departments of communication, science and technology, revenue, electricity board in Gujarat from 1967 to 1992. Prior to his appointment in the Election Commission of India, Mr. Gopal Swami was a Secretary General in the National Human Rights Commission, Secretary in the Department of Culture and the Human Home Secretary, and the, sorry, and the Union Home Secretary. He also worked as an advisor education in the Planning Commission of India and as Joint Secretary in Department of Electronics while heading the STPI and SATCOM India Society. Mr. Gopal Swami was awarded the Padma Bhushan in 2015. A very warm welcome to you, sir. It is indeed honor and privilege to have you with us today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We have a very young panelist, Mr. Jagadishwaran R., the, uh, the Assistant Commissioner of Income Tax Karnataka and Goa Region. He is B.Tech in Metallurgical and Materials Engineering, who cleared the Civil Services exam in 2019 in his first attempt and got into the Indian Revenue Service. A very warm welcome to you, Mr. Jagadishwaran. So, and we'll soon be joined by a third speaker, Mr. Gangan Deep Singh Bedi. And when he joins, I'll introduce him as well. So now let me first start uh, by asking both of you uh, who are present now that basically uh, clearing UPSC, what does it mean? You know, what kind of mindset should a candidate have? Because I'm sure it's first the clear decision in our mind that, yes, I want to become an IS officer. And then how do you take the call? Because, you know, it is not just UPC or becoming an IS office is not, not just about power and perks. So you need to have an aptitude. You need to have that mindset. Does everybody who writes the UPSC and gets selected understand what public service is all about? So, Mr. Gopalaswamy, perhaps you could... Yeah, um, uh, you, 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 um, uh, you mentioned the uh, issue of public service. And that is the most important one. If you are inclined to uh, to join a, a service which is basically a public service then uh, IAS and other services are all for you but uh, as you also rightly in between mentioned it is not about only perks and uh, or the power and in fact um, if anybody is thinking of the power behind it or the power I think it is very illusory in the sense that you know, in a democratic country, you should be aware that uh, the elected representatives are the real um, uh, voices of the people. And therefore, as uh, bureaucrats, it is your uh, responsibility to ensure and help the public at large with your uh, actions and not get carried away merely by by uh, the three letters behind your name. I, I would like to recall here. <clears throat> the uh, the first piece of advice which was given to us by uh, Mr. A. S. Gill of uh, the nineteen fifty three batch, who was the director of our uh, uh, in, in the state of Gujarat when we reported, uh, he was the director of our uh, training institution, and he said, uh, "Gentlemen, please forget the three letters behind your uh, name. Uh, in this state, your work will have to uh, give you the um, uh, recognition." not merely the three letters IAS. So um, the crux of the whole matter is that uh, this is a service, it's a public service. And if you are entering uh, this with that view in mind, um, then only you will be successful in, the, in your career. And that should be the uh, thing which you should hold dear to your heart. If not, 
it's better not to attempt um, uh, the uh, services uh, part of it at all. You have uh, these days we have plenty of opportunity. You can look for anything beyond uh, out of uh, out of uh, this area also. But be aware that uh, service to the public is what the whole service is about. Uh, Mr. Jagdishwan, would you like to add uh, to these uh, inputs? Yeah. <clears throat> First of all, thank you uh, for the warm welcome. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, it's an honor for me to be among uh, such uh, stalwart personalities. Um, coming to the question of, uh, I mean, whether before coming to the, uh, before taking the exam itself, are students ready? Uh, I mean, um, I, from my personal uh, experience, I would say, I mean, uh, I was clear what not to do rather than what to do. I was I didn't want to pursue gate or cat, so that's the main reason why I chose uh, civil services. And I was inclined uh, kind of socially, uh, you know, society, politics, law, administration. I was inclined towards that, uh, so I I thought why not uh, UPSC. Uh, but when I began my journey, only I realized the potential of uh, the civil services and. Um, you know, uh, and the prospect of, for me, the prospect of being, uh, you know, among the policy making circles um, and to be able to uh, contribute uh, in the, you know, in society, socio political, you know, uh, economic uh, administration uh, was, was one of the exciting prospects for me and uh, to, you know, to bring about some good changes. So, all these things, I think, one, once I get got into the process, I, imbibe that and, and realize the potential of uh, being a civil servant and uh, and since then there was no looking back then wonderful so uh, we have mr gagandeep singh Bedi joining us and uh, good morning sir and let me quickly introduce uh, you to him uh, him to you he is a much respected is officer in tamil nadu often referred to as the mascot of disaster management he is remembered for spearheading the fight against tsunami in 2004 in Kadalore and again for his services during the floods in 2005 in the district. And he endeared himself to the people of Kadalore. A BE graduate from Punjab, Mr. Pedi was selected in the Indian Administrative Services in 1993 and has held prominent positions as collector of Kanyakumari and Kadalore, commissioner of Madurai Corporation, Managing Director of Tamil Nadu Water Supply and Drainage Board and Secretary for Rural Development and Panchayati Raj Departments. Known for his contribution to ecology and environment, Mr. Bedi has won the Chief Minister's Green Award twice and the 2016 National Award for Implementation of the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme. Mr. Bedi served as the District Monitor Officer for COVID-19 in Kadalore before taking over as the Chennai Corporation Commissioner. Currently, he is Principal Secretary, Health and Family Welfare. A warm welcome to you, Mr. Bedi. And uh, yet... thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, all the the introduction for me. Thank you so much. So I could join a little late because we had a state function of health, so I I was a bit late in joining the meeting. Uh, not at all, sir. So we just began our discussion, but before that, I would also tell you that questions have been bombarded. <laughs> <laughs> just we are barely five minutes into the program. So, Mr. Bedi, we had just taken the first round. I was just asking that what is it mindset, you know, is required before the student uh, starts preparing for writing the civil service exam? Oh, okay. Uh, the, the mindset I would like to say should be that, for example, I am an engineer and uh, uh, I did my engineering uh, from Punjab. Thereafter, uh, I also uh, joined the Indian Engineering Services. I was in the railways uh, for about uh, two years before I got into the, the civil services. Uh, all services are good. In fact, we should have a mindset for the service in which uh, one uh, we, we work. If we are uh, if we are really uh, like uh, having a mindset to work in in technical side, go into the research. Then perhaps the the, uh, the 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 person who who has a mindset like that should actually go into that particular field, and he or she may not be suitable in another field like administration or management, etc. But I personally felt that uh, I will like to use my engineering knowledge for administration because this is a service that I had a belief before joining the service, and I have a belief now also. Uh, and uh, it's not theoretical, but this is a service in which a person can create a huge impact in the society for uh, the, the benefit of lakhs of people. Uh, 
so you get immense job satisfaction as a by product but a, a single individual can cause a huge change in the society and that's uh, that's always uh, has uh, that has always been there in my mind so if if uh, uh, the aim of the student who will like to write or or, or the, the graduate or post graduate who, who wants to go into the civil, civil services is to use his or her knowledge to create an impact in the society and that's the award he wants to get for working in that job there is no better job than civil services so so that that's a mindset that one should have and uh, one should really go for it because i feel that this is one of the best jobs if you have that particular mindset to create a change by virtue of your the your subject knowledge as well as your uh, your uh, inkling towards uh, being in administration uh so it's all three of your officers so why is why do you think is the civil service examination so intimidating and now that you have cleared it do you think oh it was pretty easy i mean there's there's this has to be a method to preparation uh so you know uh, i of course uh, as compared to jagdish suran who cleared, cleared in 2000 his 2020 batch like uh, i i was i am from 93 batch of ias and it's it was never there's never been easy the exam has never been easy i have been a gold medalist in my engineering degree and i was uh, in the first attempt i i had uh, cleared the indian engineering services exams but in my first attempt when i took the ias exam uh, like uh, i i didn't clear i of course clear the prelims i didn't clear the mains that time so it was in the second uh, uh, attempt which i took up uh, in i wrote the exam in 92 and got into 93 batch so it was then that actually uh, i learned my lessons and then of course uh, i got 20th rank in india so uh, like uh, it's never been easy and uh, but i had of course a plan b also i like to tell uh, all the students that sometimes you get so much uh, engrossed in the preparation that a student will never have a plan b always for life whatever be the opportunity whatever may be the Uh, the challenge we should always have a plan b i had a plan b that if i don't join the civil services i am i am in into in indian engineering services which is a very good job and uh, there also it's administration in of the railways you, you you know beyond a certain seniority you are more or less into administration so but it's a tough exam i like to say and i'll also like to uh, again reminds all the students always have a plan b with you right but gopal swami sir i would like to hear your views on this because backroom discussions you said how easy it was yeah i, I think um, uh, you know i i wrote the exam at least 28 years before uh, or 30 years before uh, gagandeep and um, it uh, and well i cleared in the first attempt after about 6 months of preparation um definitely looking at what is the um, what is the type of questions and then the the marking type and things like that and the coverage of subjects and the depth to which um, the the uh, coverage is there i find um, uh, it today it is far tougher than what it was uh, 50 60 years ago and, and um, yeah, from that point of view i would say that um, uh, the preparations today need to be far more um, you know concentrated and you should spend uh, uh, considerable time pl- plan prepare uh, from starting from choosing your subject onwards you have to have your heart in it and uh, it cannot be done very casually but i i assume that both of you didn't go to any coaching institution mr bedi and mr gopal swami i i didn't i didn't uh, mr bedi did you <laughs> but i had i had many friends uh, preparing together therefore uh, we could uh, kind of you know exchange notes and um, uh, that's how i did it okay my take on this is that uh, like uh, as the time has passed the the perhaps the the competition has been getting li- little tough exam style has also been getting little tough you know i actually my point of, i didn't go to an institution but i did take coaching from a teacher uh, you know the reason being that i did my b in electronics and communications and uh, i still feel that um, as per my knowledge uh, the, the subject is only of electrical engineering and uh, in that that half of the paper is something that you don't study so i didn't opt for the electrical engineering subject uh, so i took history as a subject and another subject i took of literature of my life. so for history like when i was there i my 
seniors, three or four of them of my college, they had uh, got some teaching from a teacher. And uh, I also went to him for three to four months. He uh, actually gave us an overall perspective of history. Also gave us some tidbits uh, of how to prepare for GS. And then, of course, it was on my own. I did take three to four months of coaching. Coaching is not bad. Um, I would like to just extrapolate on what I have said is that with the competition being tough and with the present style of uh, civil services being that prelims itself is very tough and uh, uh, like uh, it eliminates a lot of good students also. Uh, one can just not be overconfident and just read some books, etc. I suggest that either one should use the internet and there are a lot of free coaching material available on, on internet and, uh, and uh, consolidate uh, whatever information is there. So one can have coaching, free coaching from the web or if one is okay, like one can also have uh, uh, coaching from some institution so that you know what to prepare, how to prepare. Because if the syllabus is huge and you have uh, lesser time always and uh, how, uh, how to be uh, prepared for the competition, one does need some hand-holding, whatever uh, may be the acumen or intelligence of the student. I feel that uh, that is required. So I'll summarize again. I, I entirely, yes. yeah, yeah. Yes. So both, if uh, it's not, I'm not endorsing any that you, one should spend money and go to an institution. But if if that is okay, that will be useful. If one doesn't want to do, one should definitely go to the web. There's a lot of free information available, a lot of free lectures, guidance, toppers, materials available. Use that as your guidance material for preparing the civil services. Uh, I would like to bring in Mr. Jagadishwaran, who is the first product of Chinmaya Academy, and he cleared the exam in the first attempt. Because you were also, we were, while in the backroom discussions, you were mentioning some patterns have changed in the examination format. So maybe you could throw some light on that. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, as far as this uh, intimidating, the civil service exam being intimidating uh, is concerned, I think, yeah, it is true. Uh, especially for a fresher who's coming inside, uh, what we know about the exam is it's, it's super tough. It's the world's toughest examination. You have to read uh, humongous materials uh, to clear it, everything. And all those things are fairly true also. When I entered, I also, I was a fresher. I didn't have prior knowledge about the exam. Uh, I had no legacy or family members or friends uh, being a civil servant, etc. So, but um, but what I had was uh, I was ready to give it all come what may. So that that's the only mindset I had. Uh, but in hindsight, after clearing this exam, what I could say about this uh, examination is that uh, the exam or the question paper per se is not the toughest or the is, is not tough. Uh, what is tough is the process to clear this examination. That is uh, really tough and challenging. Uh, because the, the process, it, it takes about, I mean, at least uh, an year or years, depending on the luck and the efforts you put in. So years of, uh, I mean, doing the same thing, uh, so same routine again and again. I think that process, uh, it takes a toll on you mentally, physically, emotionally. So you have to be in hindsight, I can say that only. You have to be mentally ready for uh, going through that process and churn. And uh, I can, I mean, I, I would say... Two things are very important. I mean, you have to uh, have the determination and discipline. Determination to, I mean, to go through the process. I mean, come what may, you have to be ready to give it all. And discipline. Uh, by discipline, I mean, uh, I mean, this examination requires a routine to be followed. I mean, day in and day out. Uh, I'm reminded of a quote by Sunil Chetri, our Indian football captain. He says, uh, "There is no, there is no magic pill to success. Uh, I mean, the secret of success is, um, I mean, uh, is is monotonous is." I mean, continuing the monotonous and boring stuff day in and day out. I mean, I truly agree with that because this exam requires that you have to have a routine, daily routine, and you have to just continue that day in and day out uh, without any regret. I mean, and to go through that process, I think I would say two things are uh, more important to enjoy that process of learning. So once you start enjoying or find ways to enjoy that process of learning, I think uh, you can, uh, I mean, push, put aside that burden or uh, the boredom that sets in uh, I mean, it, it, this exam gives you opportunity to learn about so many things, so many fundamental things to the mere existence as a human, as a citizen, let alone UPSC aspirant. I think you need to enjoy that process and, um, and it's important to have that goal uh, or the motivation. Why you want to become a civil servant or after becoming a civil servant, what do you want to do? Why you really want to uh, become? So that having that dream is very important. Uh, being an MS Dhoni fan, I, uh, he keeps saying that you really have to have a dream. If you don't have a dream, you can't really push yourself and you don't know what the target is. 
so i think it's important to have that motivation and goal why do you want to become a civil servant what are you going to achieve with that so that only keeps you pushing you know you that only helps you waking up daily and follow that routine i think you have to be mentally ready for the process which is which is actually tough more than the exam uh, it's per se yeah. very true i agree um, i think i will also break from the pattern because there are more than 100 questions <laughs> i think i'll start taking a few questions right away the everybody is asking about preparation and uh, so basically when should a candidate or a student start preparing somebody is saying i've joined college should i start right in first year and then how to prepare how to prepare for current affairs how to take notes from newspapers uh, everything is revolving around preparation so maybe each of you could give your inputs um as far as i'm concerned i think uh, you need to be very regular one secondly pick one or two newspapers i would uh, um i would recommend hindu sunday issue where you have um, you have a capsule form at least three subjects covered of uh, current topics and very comprehensively and uh, there is one more um, thing on on the latest scientific uh, uh, progress etc so you you need to stick to one or two newspapers with this kind of an approach and uh, material one secondly as far as preparation is concerned i think if you have the heart in it <clears throat> then i would suggest that by the time you join the college you should start at least getting aware of your uh, you know environment and the uh, uh, and various issues related to current affairs i mean you you educate yourself you can't be just unaware of these things just concentrate on whatever subjects you have taken in the college and uh, be done with it no you if you had your heart in uh, civil service then at least get yourself knowledgeable in current affairs etc uh, a regular reader regular reader okay i mean if you if you are the type who believes in taking notes etc etc fine you can keep uh, notes of uh, these issues but it should be a very regular maybe every day half an hour 45 minutes you spend on appraising yourself updating yourself on current affairs and uh, whatever is happening in the country and the world so that is one way of uh, in my view to be uh, to be ready for the final uh, attempt at the examination because there is a lot which uh, the preliminary exam involves a lot of material from across the world across the uh, subjects <clears throat> and um, the preparation to start with a couple of years earlier um, uh, will will do you well of course you can concentrate in the last one year on the uh, on the uh, topics chosen by you for the examination i mean uh, that is fine but what you need to do is to become aware uh, of um, uh, of the entire spectrum of happenings in in an era, uh, around the world um, okay. Yeah. Um, okay maybe uh, so we have got sir's perspective then my perspective also i'll give uh, because uh, and not only during my time but i have been in touch with my younger colleagues etc and maybe the best perspective you will have from jagdish student my thought is like this that uh, if you really want to go join the civil services uh, have that mindset right after your 12th and uh, as sir says uh, uh, be aware of uh, the current event like newspaper is something that you should read uh, the best time to start preparation may be in the pre final year whichever the subject you are doing maybe third year or so serious preparation what i'm saying is uh, right from 10th 11th 12th you should start reading newspapers but serious preparation you should do maybe perhaps uh, you will have that seriousness once you are in pre final year or final year and uh, i will say that the uh, civil services is now earlier it used to be a lot of uh, focus on static material of uh, general uh, civil service, general knowledge etc but now uh, there is also a lot of focus on the current events also current affairs also so but of course the percentage of static versus uh, current keeps on varying in various years uh, but since the volume is vast so what i'll suggest is uh, the following number one uh, the newspaper as sir says the newspaper we should read the newspapers i'd like to suggest that the students who are uh, who want to crack the civil services should read The, the first page the headline and the corresponding uh, its uh, attachments in the inner pages because that's a lot of uh, in fact political politics is not important but all the national current national and international events one should focus on 
and the center pages, the editorials, they look boring, but we have to read. Uh, a lot of students actually they they do feel that uh, editorials uh, are boring. We will just listen to the we will read the monthly uh, the magazines or monthly uh, summarizing uh, portions etc. But if you have uh, if you read that that slowly slowly it's it's the mind also is like a huge building you have to build brick by brick. You read every day. You read the editorial. You might find it boring. My my suggestion is the students should take the newspaper. Don't spend three to four hours, but at least an hour every day. Read it and make your own short notes. Third and final year, and maybe when you are preparing, short notes on important part points. Maybe you can keep for a particular subject. For example, if it is uh, uh, the the Ukraine crisis, you are reading. You make uh, whatever the points. You don't make the entire. Don't copy the entire article, but. important issues which you will tend to forget write it down keep a few pages then next time again an editorial comes about ukraine crisis add whatever is the information in your notes so that way you forming your own notes uh, you will get practice and it will enter your mind you don't know what sort of question comes in prelims or mains but whenever it comes what's there in your mind which you have written with your hand will actually be helpful to you for writing this so read the editorials and you have in sunday i think one of these days when Uh, weekends or so when the uh, newspaper like hindu also gives the uh, uh, question and answer uh, of various topics etc it's so very nice i don't need to crack civil services again but i read it i also when i do my walking i actually listen to some of those analysis also something in hindu also you can actually uh, listen to the uh, this thing uh, voice voice some other papers also you can top up uh, times of india or indian express so that's my view in this regard. so that is one second issue is that you should also uh, static is something which you should not uh, uh, take it lightly because huge you have history geography political science economics and society culture and all various subjects are there you should actually go through get into go to the web or check your institution go through all those static uh, books some of them are ncert books which are very good for you go through it even if you have not studied it if you have studied it well go revise it otherwise you study it uh, highlight whatever is important and slowly you will know also see the questions what sort of questions comes so you will know what sort of questions will be relevant so go through that also so static also you should keep on reading because some some year static a lot of questions are there and uh, you can't really neglect that in my opinion so static and covered with the newspaper these two things you do and suppose you are attempting uh, so the students who are attempt going to attempt next year first of all the prelims so you can't uh, start your main sub main subject uh, next year after clearing the prelims itself have an eye on what subject you will you are going to choose and for that also go for the material go through it at least once before your prelims before your final 3 to 4 months of your prelims so that if you clear the prelims then you are not panicky that oh i have not touched it at all and this all thing is new at least you should have gone once or twice so that you are able to cover it up in the few months that's available in prelims and mains this is my summarized take on this thank you uh, since both of you focused on newspaper there are a lot of multiple uh, less multiple similar questions which say that we find it very difficult to read and analyze newspapers so is there any possible alternative mr jagadishwaran maybe since you are from the newest batch you could tell us again reemphasize the importance yeah um, definitely as uh, sir has mentioned before uh, newspapers actually have been uh, you know the importance of current affairs have been increasing in the exams of late um, uh, and especially you know when to exam start the exam uh, uh, like these days uh, many people are joining uh, like for iit coaching in early kindergarten days itself they are joining i mean that's not required like uh, what is required in school days or college days is just an an inclination towards knowing what is happening around you that that is enough i guess once you clear your uh, graduation or during graduation itself i mean uh, if you are really interested you can take a, choose a stream which is relevant uh, for your optional subject also that is also an uh, an option uh, coming to the newspapers thing uh, i think yes uh, there is no alternative to the newspaper as uh, was asking like uh, it's difficult to make notes or understand everything but yeah that that is thing but uh, you know going through daily current affairs and and trying to understand actually what is happening around you rather than you know trying to prepare for the exam perspective 
just to have that uh, interest and knowing what is happening around you just for example like i could say uh, in this in this pre uh, prelims this year 2023 uh, there was a question about uh, about uh, awards being given to the chess uh, i mean uh, the, the champions the men and women uh, that 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 was also asked in as a question in uh, prelims that was because we conducted uh, the chess olympiad in tamil nadu uh, the last year so that's why the, that question was asked uh, about the mascot the thambi uh, which was the mascot of the chess olympiad i think there were questions about that also uh, i mean uh, you would not go and refer to what are the awards given for the chess uh, champions etc otherwise so it's just because it came on the news it was in the news and uh, tamil nadu got uh, so much uh, laurels for conducting that in a very short span so that question was asked in the prelims so the importance of uh, current affairs have been increasing of late uh, especially with prelims and also in other uh, uh, option like mains like gs2 gs3 i mean uh, gs2 international relations you can uh, easily uh, i mean focus on, i mean uh, qualify only by focusing on the current affairs what are the issues that is uh, happening in the international affairs so uh, i won't say there is any alternative to uh, current affairs or the newspaper it is always good to uh, read that uh, develop that reading habit and know what is happening and take notes by ourselves otherwise these days we are having so many uh, i mean institutes uh, there are online they provide the capsules like they compile that monthly wise weekly there are many uh, i mean uh, you get a compiled or a consolidated version of whatever has happened what is relevant to the exam uh, you get many sites you just go and say uh, search on website you will get uh, the consolidated news current affairs compiled so you don't need to necessarily uh, read the newspaper regularly you can just refer to that uh, on daily basis or monthly basis you uh, have immense material over there that is that also can be one of the options i mean if you don't want to take your own notes and if you find it difficult you can uh, choose that also like uh, you have to name a few like you have vision 365 i mean you you get a compiled uh, insights etc so many things are there compiled uh, material you will get in current affairs that is that also can be of some help uh, mr gopal so what would you tell or what would be your advice to the first timers and the or the fresh aspirants visa vis the repeaters because there are again lot of questions where uh, people are writing that i have been working hard i'm following all the tips but i am not able to clear the prelims so the first time um, exam uh, examinees versus the repeaters what would you like to tell them i there is no uh, there is no magic bullet in this you see it's okay i mean the sense that you should be prepared for the uh, best and for the worst also so don't think that uh, it is a be all and end all of life you don't uh, make it uh, in the first uh, attempt that that's not uh, really the uh, the way you should proceed with it uh, one self confidence that you will be able to crack it that's most important that's something which you can uh, cannot afford to lose so one is the uh, self confidence in you but you should also be analytical to see where you didn't do well i mean that your your um, analysis on this area will be very very useful you will you will know of course i mean you will know after the exam is over where you did well you, where you didn't do well and how to improve yourself and you you will get, get an idea there is uh, absolutely everybody is a rational person and will be able to think through the issue so that is something where if you have chosen a subject which is um, uh which you didn't uh, feel very comfortable with after uh, taking the examination you should be prepared to change you don't uh, keep on attempting the same thing despite the fact that your um, your own assessment of your uh, uh, your uh, performance tells you that well that subject is something which you are not very comfortable with so um, it should be a, a little more flexible than being too rigid about the subject selection once i i selected and i will go through with that no i think uh, you should be prepared to uh, to take another subjects which when you when you when you yourself feel that you didn't do well in a particular subject there will be available uh, material and material and the subjects are very vast so one should be able to be one should be flexible in uh, his approach the most important is two things in my view one a regular attempt at educating yourself i mean you should never um, uh, never uh, say that i am unable to spare the time for a particular day a particular day. every day it should be a routine which you should uh, stick to one hour or one and a half hours whatever uh, you are comfortable with but that should be a regular um, regular happening you cannot afford to miss that point second is total self confidence that you will be able to crack it it's not that um, 
um, uh, it's not that difficult that you cannot make it. So uh, without that self-confidence, you will not be able to um, achieve uh, much. And that is most important in my view, regularity as well as self-confidence. Right. So surveys also reveal, you know, that subjects like history, political science, IR, psychology, they are the more popular ones for clearing the UPSC. So uh, one of the participants is asking that people who come with humanities background, why do they find it so difficult to crack it? And why is it that engineers and even the MBBS degree holders, they crack the exam and they turn out to be toppers? And all three of you are from science background. I know you, sir, you are a chemistry gold medalist and <laughs> Mr. Gagandeep is an engineer and so is Mr. Jagadishwaran. So this is this particular question that why people with humanities background, why are they finding it difficult to crack it? Uh, let me, yeah, let me, let me first answer the question. Um, in the, in the initial years of the IAS, etc., far more students from humanities were the ones who were successful uh, as compared to uh, the uh, science or engineering background. Later on, it shifted. From middle 60 onwards, uh, people with engineering background, science background got in a large number. I don't think the, the, the uh, background uh, uh, matters so much. It is the it is the training which you get. You know, in an engineering student, um, logical thinking, data analysis, and um, be able to interpret interpret data are all important. That is what you go through with. That is something which uh, which helps you in cracking the examination. Therefore, it is not engineering or uh, versus humanities. It's actually the uh, training of the mind. To my to my view, that is what is um, uh, important. And therefore, you need to develop an analytical mind mindset. And uh, whether you are uh, subject as humanities or otherwise, you will still be successful if you do that. Mr. Bedi? Uh, I, I will say that all the streams have their own advantage. And first, let me say that in the, if you see the analysis of the last four or five years, there have been many toppers, second toppers, third toppers who are having humanities background. So it's not that engineers only. Are. In fact, during when our batches were there, it was mostly engineers. But of late, a lot of uh, students with uh, non-engineering, non-medical background have been actually been amongst the toppers. So that is one. Uh, every field has an advantage. Those who are engineers have an advantage because subjects like CSAT and other things, uh, they, they can do it much more easily, which you have to qualify. And as an engineer, you have, uh, uh, you, have uh, you develop a practice of analysis of various uh, issues, etc. That's an advantage for engineers, actually. The advantage for medical students is that they have huge books to read during MBBS. So they get a, a practice of learning voluminous data in a short span of time. That's, that's the advantage of the doctors. The advantage of humanities students is a big advantage because all the engineers and doctors and uh, other uh, discipline students, they have actually to, uh, uh, the, the syllabus of civil services has a huge number of humanities subjects, history, political science, geography, economics, et cetera which a humanities student would have actually studied during uh, his or her graduation. They will only have to revise. So I will surely say that every student is on a level playing field. And I also endorse what Sir is telling. You don't have any advantage or disadvantage being an engineer or a doctor. Everybody is on the level playing field. Thank you. So right now, since there is a mushrooming of coaching institutions and the requirement is also felt. So some people want to know because newspapers are also filled with ads for coaching institutions. Institution. So some people want to know how to select a good coaching institution. Maybe Jagdish one should answer this. Yeah, should uh, be able to ask. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, as far as coaching is concerned, yes, this uh, question is always in all every aspirant's mind. Should I go for coaching? What is the best coaching institute, etc.? Uh, I think, uh, I mean, coaching, you can see it's not just the, what uh, the physical classroom faculty teaching and uh, learning. That is not the only aspect of coaching. Uh, for me, I mean, coaching comprises of an array of things like right from the faculty, uh, going to classroom, listening uh, to the faculty, uh, having conducting mock tests, uh, taking test series, uh, mock interviews, everything comes under the uh, umbrella of coaching. So at one point or the other, uh, I think every aspirant would be opting any of these things or all of these things, depending upon uh, their caliber So and, and necessity. So I think coaching is somewhat, and I think uh, of late recently, without that, I mean, uh, everyone would be opting for any test series, uh, definitely. So that is also kind of coaching only. 
so uh, that has become kind of uh, necessary but yeah there are people who have uh, i mean without uh, attending that classroom online coaching or, uh, uh, or or the physical classroom coaching they have uh, cleared uh, many people are there but yeah uh, for a fresher i would say yes who doesn't have any idea about the exam like i was uh, uh, i mean coaching centers do help because they they know they have prior experience expertise in this field and they have been uh, in this uh, field for quite some time sometime and they can give you uh, find you a pathway uh, along which you need to travel so that can be an initiative uh, upon that it's it's a it's, it depends upon you only to how you develop on it and how much effort you are willing to put and you, how much effort uh, what are the things you are willing to refer and uh, select and study so i think coaching helps for a uh, fresher and uh, institute as far as how to choose the institutes uh, i think uh, i don't know how to uh, choose all the institutes i mean uh, you can go by the uh, the the word word of mouth or uh, before you, earlier it delhi used to be the hub of all coaching centers now it has changed completely delhi uh, is not the only hub i think we have uh, with the coaching centers have proliferated and it's it's uh, diversified also in chennai we have in hyderabad bangalore everywhere yeah so that that one myth has been uh, broken and uh, and also that not necessarily only the big institutes who study in big institutes they are the only ones capable of uh, clearing that, that is also not the thing uh, even um, i mean i i cleared from uh, chinmay academy civil service in my very first attempt that was uh, actually uh, i mean very little known uh, to others uh, at that time itself so i think that that also doesn't matter uh, but yeah for freshers initially i think coaching centers do help to find a pathway i think each year i i, I like would like to add something i would like to add something here i think you also look at the faculty and uh, if there are people with uh, background of um, uh, service maybe it it is um, you know they they uh, the the kind of uh, advice or the the coverage would be slightly better than uh, anybody who's uh, just learned about the subject and uh, is trying to teach you uh mr desikan since you are representing the chinmaya academy yes. um, uh, i like to in a word quickly yeah yeah thank, thank you, you. Uh, one minute okay is it an echo yeah uh so uh, regarding this uh, selecting a coaching centers of, of course there is a, a trend uh, people get confused because of the exaggerated results by many coaching centers they have to be they have to select the authentic uh, coaching centers like authentic authentic institutes uh, for example if chinmaya if you say chinmaya chinmaya is academy was started Uh, as a uh, not as a commercial academy it's a it's a uh, nation building initiative by uh, chinmaya mission trust nation building initiative it's a worldwide trust so we are uh, apart from ias coaching we also do all this uh, mind management uh, thing also we train uh, people for that and we have a very experienced and competent uh, faculty team with us and we are guided by people like uh, gopal swami sir in our advisory council we, we uh, many uh, stalwarts are there who have served for many years in ias ips ifs and the academicians are there so there are many factors they should look at the authenticity of the coaching center then while joining so that that will help them instead of going by the results or going by the exaggerated results it, it is unfortunate it's happening uh, i i saw one question about that um um the academies or uh, you know institutions are exaggerating the results how to select we are getting confused how to select the academy that's why i want to and one more thing i wanted to add uh, gagandeep singh sir was uh, telling about um, how when to start the uh, coaching i mean when to start the preparation at uh, after finishing 12th standard it will be appropriate so we have uh, to facilitate that we have a batch called uh, weekend batch weekend batch is for the college students Uh, once if uh, once they finish 12th standard once they enter into college they can join our weekend batch the classes will be conducted only on weekends and it is for 3 years while they are in college for 3 years or 4 years that will that will parallelly they can prepare for ias that will help them uh, early preparation will always help them to clear the um, ias I, clear the civil service exam in the first attempt or early attempts so that that is uh, that's what i want to tell you thank, thank you, you. so uh, as you mentioned about mind management there are a lot of questions about time management you know when students go to college they are already bogged down by uh, so many assignments or the vast course that they have to study and pass 
So children, uh, students are also asking about how to manage time and uh, whether it is better to study alone or in peer group or through any institution. Mr. Jagadishwaran, what was your approach? Uh, as far as time management is concerned, I think um, uh, what I would personally say is it, it I mean, if, if you can afford, uh, you can give completely a year or so uh, to, for the complete uh, coaching or preparation and uh, attend the exam. That would be the best thing. Um, and as far as studies is concerned, it depends completely upon uh, your, your personality, whether you like studying alone or in groups, etc. I, I know people who love studying in groups because that has its own advantage. And uh, I studied alone only. I was at home. So I was I prepared alone. So I love that. But yeah, both has advantages and disadvantages. It depends completely on you. Both works, actually. It's nothing like there's a universal solution. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, um, preparation also here. I'd like to add one more thing as uh, Rupal Zami said and uh, Gandeep sir mentioned before. Um, I mean, once you considering the uncertainties and the way the paper has evolved, uh, it's it's definitely good to have a plan B. You know, once you're beyond your second or third attempt, it's practically, I mean, it's it's uh, good to have a plan B. And by plan B, uh, what I mean is to have an alternate uh, career option. Like, and there, there are many uh, government exams itself, uh, you know, which which provide uh, a great, if, if not better than civil service, almost on par with what civil services provide you. There are so many government examinations and also even private sector, you, are, you, need, you have, uh, 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 I mean, a beautiful opportunity to, to serve the uh, society at the time, private sector also, and in think tanks, many think tanks, many opportunities are there. So I think this uh, UPSC are nothing or uh, zero, it's not a zero-sum game. So it's, it's always better to have an alternate option, uh, considering off late the paper, how it has been, the uncertainty, uncertainty level and the luck factor has been increasing. So I think once you're beyond a third attempt or something, it's, it's better to have a plan B uh, and of course, uh, pursue the civil service with full, full potential. So I think also because the UPSC syllabus is vast and many students are not properly able to fathom it. So, uh, that, so that is where there are a lot of the subject specific questions, you know, whether psychology will help me better, sociology will help me better, uh, or should I only focus on NCRT subjects? So if you could uh, tell, tell us a bit about that. Those are Aspirant, repetitive, so I'm just clubbing them. Yeah, this one question will be always in aspirant's mind, which optional subject to choose, which one I would be at, uh, at uh, I would be a better position than others. See, uh, the best answer is we get from the data. So this year in 2023, uh, if you see the top 10 or top 20, if you take the people who are qualified, uh, the toppers, uh, the variety of optional subjects they have chosen is immense. Like you have everything, all the uh, optional subjects in this top 15 itself, like uh, the toppers, PSIR, political science, commerce and uh, accountancy, law, philosophy, English literature, mathematics, um, sociology, geography, anthropology, everything was there in the top 15 itself. So that just shows that it, uh, it necessarily, it doesn't depend on the optional that you choose. So as far as selecting an optional is concerned, uh, what is immense is, what is uh, predominant is required is uh, the interest what you have in that option. So you need to put in your yeah. heart and soul into that optional because you will be going in depth studying uh, on par with uh, the master's degree uh, pursued in that. So you need, first thing you have to have is that interest to pursue and uh, go in depth into the option. Then what you need to uh, see is the resources or the materials, are they available for that uh, optional concern? And uh, do you have any guidance or mentor for that optional subject uh, in your vicinity or somewhere in online? So I think if you cover all these things, but predominantly the interest to pursue that option. If you have that, I think uh, you can, uh, any optional for, for that matter will work uh, in UPSC civil services. Yeah. Asma, Mr. I saw you raise your hand. Maybe you wanted to add something. Yeah, yeah. I just, you know, I totally endorse uh, what uh, the Gish uh, said about choosing a subject. I mean, you are comfortable with it and uh, uh, very happy to uh, do that and choose it irrespective of, uh, you know, what uh, in the market going around saying that this is easy, this is the best uh, subject, etc. Et Second, I would like to, you know, on, on uh, time management, one of the issues which I would like to mention because I benefited benefited along uh, a lot by it. Allocate a time and stick to it. But one thing you should always do, I am a great uh, advocate of yoga. 20 minutes. 20 minutes of yoga will perk your mind and make you very fresh. So even today in the evening, if you are choosing a time of, say, after 9 o'clock to study, 
do yoga for about 20 minutes take 10 minutes and there after you uh, you uh, pursue the subject your mind will be very clear very fresh and that is something which i have personally benefited and therefore i am mentioning that to you throughout the uh, not only uh, from the time uh, of my college um, it was not exactly yoga which i did but something which is fashioned on yoga okay uh, which uh, which somebody uh, somebody recommended to me and i found it very uh, useful it is the it is taking the a uh, lot of um, uh, you know yoga postures and the exercises but modified to an extent uh, of uh, actual uh, i went to suiting each person's requirement so there is something throughout the life i uh, did i mean even today i do that so that is something which i would like to advocate very strongly right so i think there's a lot of this confusion about this vastness of upsc syllabus so some uh, people want to know like somebody is going to write the exam in 2024 somebody is right going to write it in 2025 so they're specifically asking from which year which periods current affairs should i start <laughs> preparing from and <laughs> also uh, and also is it the quality of the material or the quantity of the material i should focus on so i mean or any of you could give your input so uh, may i as far as current affairs is concerned uh, i think uh, fairly like last one year if you focus if you start like from this day june uh, to next year next year prelims will be in june so i think the one year is uh, fairly enough and in this current affairs i mean daily news you will get uh, say, uh, next month you might get a news that was relevant uh, like two years back three years back some court cases that judgment would have come uh, this year so that is also it doesn't mean that okay that case happened three years back i should not focus on that no that doesn't that doesn't work so in this uh, one year whatever news whatever current happen uh, even happen so if you focus on that and uh, not just on the newspaper alone you read a news article you don't understand you go search uh, more on that news article if you uh, don't understand particular thing some legal stuff some uh, political thing you go search on that so that will expand your horizon so that's how you uh, work your on your current affairs but yeah fairly one year is uh, more than enough for 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 clearing for the next uh, prelims so you need not uh, just go and uh, sit and read the newspapers two years back man. that is not necessary but yeah one year you have to put your heart and soul into it And, and and ready to expand your horizon um, it is is there a difference in preparing for the prelims and preparing for the mains and which is the most difficult level prelims mains and to uh okay you are asking me uh, so i will also like to supplement uh, to what yagdishran says in terms of current events preparation i agree with what he says that uh, maybe the exam current affairs related questions do come uh, within the last about a year or slightly more than that that's the broad trend but as i told earlier also uh, you can't uh, if you have never touched the newspaper and suddenly you start reading the newspaper then you will find little difficult difficulty in jumping that height of the level of the information that is being given over there that might be also especially relating to some subjects like economics etc where you might find if you are not an economic student then you will find it difficult so you have to slowly climb up the ramp this is what i'll say in the sense that i will still reiterate read the newspapers every day uh, initially if you are in 11 12th first year second years etc do read the inner pages such articles where you will have a broad build up of your knowledge then of course last one year when you are really in, you are going to write next year you should have then you should read all the newspaper all the articles especially the discussion articles which are there inside so so that is the 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 point that i will like to say the amongst the your question prelims mains and interview i will like to say again that uh, perhaps with the huge competition there and lot of elimination being uh, undertaken uh, the, prelims is the toughest but then for prelims the syllabus is also vast so uh, try to the student should try to go through all the static material which is there for the prelims uh, at least uh, two three times before uh, their exam so that uh, they are able to cover that vast static material otherwise even if you are a, uh, i i believe that now there are many toppers of uh, uh, first uh, 200 uh, rank rankers of the last year who have not been able to clear prelims also this time this prelims is totally dicey it's not really uh, uh, it, sometimes i might, might like to say it doesn't really check up uh, how good you are but 
then it's your luck and it's better to cover all the portion of prelims as far as possible. So prelims is the toughest. Take it the most seriously, but don't let uh, go of the mains uh, subject. If you clear, if you do prelims, of course, your general studies keeps on getting updated for most of the subjects. Mains uh, subject also, so if possible, next year you should start doing this year also so that, so that suddenly you will not have a shortage of time. So prelims is the toughest. Next mains. And interview is your own personality. Each and every day you use interviews based on what you have, uh, uh, how you have interacted in your college, etc. And how you have read the, again, there I will again like to say, reading newspapers, listening to the uh, general discussion articles, listening to the debates, etc. Relating general knowledge across the years will build up your personality. So that will help you in your interview, etc. Thank you. The communication skills will also work yes. in there. Yeah, yes. I would like to add something. Please. Uh, so, uh, as the, as uh, Gagandeep sir was uh, telling, prelims is the toughest one. And it's also called elimination from people get eliminated because from 10 lakh to uh, nearly 10 lakh people register for that, apply for that. And they are, they, are, they will select only in thousands. So it will, uh, so we, that's why in, uh, in Chinmaya also, we, we give 60 prelims test with discussions and revision classes, everything, many. And uh, for mains, we provide 40 um, tests, test series. So for uh, prelims, we give, give 60 tests with discussions. So focus is, should be more on prelims. That's, that is the area where we should first focus more and then mains become, uh, with little effort, I think we can clear the mains. So prelims is the toughest one. That's what I would like to say. Okay. I mean, there are still many, many more questions asking only about preparation and they're very repetitive also. And people specifically want to know if I'm a beginner, how should I start? If I'm in first year, how should I start? If I'm in class ninth, whether I should start now? And uh, But there's another specific question about important aspects of the interview stage because many people also, maybe they clear prelims and mains, but they get intimidated by the interview stage. So... Uh, would you like to give your inputs, any of you? Uh, just one in input I'll give and then maybe leave to the other uh, the other important panelists also. Uh, uh, you had asked earlier, we should prepare alone or we should prepare in a group. I would like to say that for interview, it's always better to once if you get yeah. your call for, if you clear your mails, every day you should sit in the peer group and discuss various subjects. Uh, in fact, uh, that is what I also did uh, during my time that I once uh, some of us cleared. So we divided all the issues which are of relevance. We, we marked it up and we all used to come prepared uh, for those particular uh, subjects. And every day we'll sit uh, together for about an hour or an hour and a half and used to discuss with each other. So a lot of cross learning you will have yeah. and everybody will, will be asked to speak. That will give a lot of uh, uh, confidence in you. Prepare for interview in a group. So that is what I would like to say. And of course, the, the whatever you have prepared for the mains and what you have written, your bio data, your background, your uh, education, etc. You have to specifically prepare for that. And yeah, there are a lot of in free material available on the website also, or interviews of the past toppers also, which you can listen to and accordingly prepare yourself. But prepare along with the peers also and do give mock interviews also. That's what I'll say. I, I, I endorse what uh, Gagandeep uh, said about uh, uh, doing it in a group. It, uh, that is what I also did. In the sense that that is uh, at least for the interview, that is an important uh, step one. Second is the your success. One uh, point he rightly mentioned that when you make the application, keep a copy. All that you have mentioned, many of the questions might come from out of the uh, uh, applications you have made. And uh, if you made a claim and you are not able to support it by any uh, uh, your uh, your answers, then you you are letting yourself down uh, very badly. The other thing which I would like to say is that if you uh, you will be successful in the interview if you don't treat it or you don't allow it to become a mere question and answer session. I mean, it, it is your personality which should make it into an into a exchange of views rather than you know the digital. Uh, yes or no answer and the next question no if you can make it into into that then you will be very successful <clears throat> i think i mean there's a question about how do i manage work my life and ias preparation i mean how do i keep myself mentally strong during the sure. preparation? <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah uh, one thing is important sir as uh, gopal sami sir was uh, mentioning before how yoga helps sir. uh that is actually one one thing uh, like what uh, helped me was the daily physical activity of sports uh, i used to go to gym so that is also i mean really important uh, i have seen many people many friends they like uh, for preparation they uh, give up everything and they just solely sit uh, like day and night and reading uh, only the books i mean that is i mean they can think that uh, i am uh, the productivity is increasing i am putting in so much effort but that is not actually the case once you i mean allocate time to everything else like you have half an hour one hour physical activity gym also that actually enhances your productivity uh, uh, rather than you know it is kind of waste of time considering it as a waste of time so it's really important to have that uh, as a regularly uh, to interact with your family members friends uh, go out on a on a on a on a you know, know with your friends or uh what go watch a movie so all these things become a part and parcel of the preparation because it's not like solely you are just sitting with the with your books and uh, reading that uh, day in and day out so i mean allocate so and that perfect mental balance you have to actually find so life is all about actually that you know finding the perfect balance it's not just about the preparation so it, that is also uh, key aspects of preparation to have physical activity uh, interacting with friends going out chilling for some time and also uh, preparing so that's so yeah all these things incorporated only uh, brings uh, but yeah and uh, def- most importantly it's 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 useful to have one complete routine actually so you uh, wake up early in the morning okay 6 to 7 i go to gym or do that and 7 come 2 uh, hours 1 and 1/2 hours i allocate for newspapers take notes i have breakfast go and do something else or watch tv something uh, and then sit for 2 hours i study and go have lunch i think it's important to have that uh, timetable or schedule and to follow that routine day in and day out without any uh, you know you know any qualms so it's important to have that uh, schedule i think that helps a lot is there any ideal number of years previous question paper sets or the mock uh, papers one should uh, try before writing the exam somebody wants to know a previous year question papers actually it helps oh, in uh-huh. yeah uh, it helps in giving you an a fair idea of how the questions are asked so it it necessarily you don't need like it's not a cut off like five years question paper six year question paper yeah but uh, from 2013 there was a change in pattern so usually we refer from 2013 uh, but yeah last five years question paper if you are thorough with that i mean what is the pattern they have been asking the number of uh, the marks allotted to one question like it, it now it has been like 15 mark questions and 10 mark questions in gs so to gauge the, those patterns and what kind of questions they are asking and uh, to prepare yourself like five years question papers is fairly uh, uh, i mean uh, decent and uh, yeah it's no there's no hard and fast rule you get a fair idea from those previous question paper and you can calibrate your preparation based on those question papers uh, i will i will also like to supplement uh, those who have taken humanities subject uh, uh, as their optional uh, as I, as he says maybe 10 years question papers and then uh, uh, it's not only for civil services any exam uh, based on that trend Uh, which you can decipher and uh, color to something that's more likely to come this year and top up your uh, material with extra information for for those notes will be very useful that is my uh, my opinion and i am by interaction with the younger colleagues i feel that trend is there now so you like uh, there are there is a subject uh, so for example it's a political science uh, or say history there's a trend there are many subjects in each paper so these topics have been already covered in the last two three years this is likely to come mm-hmm. so if you if you do a trend analysis and the likely to come thing you can actually top up your uh, information with additional information which in, in case that that uh, question or that topic comes then uh, your answer will be different from most of the others will definitely fetch you the marks and now nowadays you know within a span of about 40 50 marks hundreds of positions they 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 get changed so that will be so previous years question paper you must see that is my opinion and 10 years papers so there's uh, a very Uh, please i was just reminded of when sir mentioned humanities i was reminded of the question engineering versus humanities i just uh, want to say i mean there are uh, with the proliferation of engineering institutes only the number of graduates engineering graduates uh, have become a lot so it's just the due to lack of employment opportunities more number of engineers are attempting uh, this examination so that's why that uh, ratio is skewed it's not like humanities people don't uh, clear at all so yeah Uh, Mr. Gopal, so we, uh, uh, maybe you would like to take this question. What exactly UPSC expects 
from the aspirants and mr bedi maybe could also tell me it's a it's a it's it's a it's a it's a very vast question of course simply i would say that you need to turn out they are uh, looking for people who are uh, committed to the welfare of the people in a very broad way i mean uh, the service is all about service not uh, you know self service but service to the uh, to the community and therefore you should be prepared uh, to uh, rough it out out there uh, with um, uh, with a sole motive that whatever as gagandeep rightly said there are opportunity there will be opportunities where you can do good for a person set up person a community and to the country so that should be uh, that's what they are looking for somebody who is committed to public welfare that's what they are looking for and, um, and that's what you should be uh, willing to if you are entering the service uh, i will also like to say you know civil servants it's not exactly the those who are the academic toppers in the respective uh, branches are the best civil servants the best civil servants in my opinion uh, and i feel that's what the ups also feels is those who have got the best personality the most balanced persons who are uh, who are number one balanced uh, in nature uh, who do not have angularities in their in their personality and who are uh, basically committed mature who will not get aggravated uh in uh, difficult situations etc so so this is something that upsc tends to and uh, upsc questions also sometimes tend to uh, uh, seek your inner nature uh, like there are there have been many uh, questions uh, to various candidates say the, the candidates from punjab when we were all going into this okay what's your view about uh, the, that time the terrorism was at its peak so the the candidates will were tested for their uh, mindset in this regard so uh, so all those things are tested so the point to summarize is it's your balanced nature your maturity and your commitment to the service that's actually tested in right finally somebody is asking once you have cleared your upsc exam what preparation you need for the job you are going to do I think both. Uh, I think I think uh, yeah. I, what I would like to suggest is, you know, it is not one job; it's many jobs. So you will keep on changing. There is the you should have the aptitude to prepare yourself as soon as you are posted to. I mean, you should be aware of the uh, uh, aware of the dimension of the uh, of the service in the sense that not the IAS, but I am talking about the public service. so you should be aware of whatever is happening in other departments not only your department but because i think the one of the one of the biggest mistakes a civil servant can make is to treat himself as a silo i mean you are alone and uh, you are uh, trying to achieve something no civil service and the public service is something where you are one of the uh, actors and uh, many other actors together and therefore the more you are um, you are in touch with others and are able to assess the situation uh, in a in a, a broader sense of the term then you will do something which uh, in your area you should do which will which will feed into the larger picture i mean you should never forget that and uh, many times of course in my uh, experience i have seen people you know if you are uh, in a particular ministry you think that that is the be all and end all of life in fact um, i think one of the one of the unfortunate things about services is that uh, each uh, ministry or each department uh, tries to function as an independent agency and uh, in a, in its own silos that is something which which uh, in the longer uh, uh, larger uh, picture, if you mix the larger picture then it is something which will actually undermine the the government and the service rather than add to it therefore you should be able to get a larger picture of the whole thing not only the area in which you are functioning but how is it related to other areas that's something which we need to uh, look at then only you will you will be a successful civil servant because you understand the entire gamut of um, uh, the, the civil service and how your action supplements or supplants or may supplant the uh, bigger picture 
Okay. Uh, let me also just quickly chip in uh, uh, also. Uh, if you are selected into the service, in my opinion, there are three things that uh, we must uh, take care of. One, many of the uh, good uh, like uh, uh, officers, they stop reading and uh, learning uh, once they have got gone into the service. <clears throat> They stop reading the newspapers also, except the, maybe the headlines, etc. So uh, it's it's the beginning of uh, the, the challenge, actually. It's very important, more important even than the, the civil services aspirants to read. It's more more important than them is perhaps people like me who have to be in Jagdishwan. We, we have to keep on reading. In fact, we have to know more each and every day. So keep your keep on continuing your learning habit, actually. Keep on sharpening your axe uh, so that uh, that's that's very important. This is one. Second is that uh, in, in the job you should also one uh, would have prepared the job for for, for the, one would have prepared for the competition for uh, one or two years, three years, preparing sitting in the home. But it in the service it's the personal relations that matter a lot. So one should develop a lot of the, the habit of improving one's own personal relationships with the other members of the society, with all stratas of society, with everybody that will actually help you to, and, and also the people's representatives, because uh, uh, it's very important uh, to have a good personality. Otherwise, there are many times that the academic toppers, even in the civil services toppers, they actually, they do not uh, do well in the service because they fail in the personal relationships in this regard. And the last is what Sir has told and what Jagdishan also has told is, and I also again reiterate, keep your physical fitness. It's very important that uh, we, we do either yoga or walking or running, etc. Have it as a lifetime uh, habit. It's useful for your preparation stage also. I will also like to add, when I was preparing, I was I used to Many times uh, walk and uh, and uh, listen to some music, or uh, even while studying, I used to walk around in a in a room and study so that I'm I'm physically mobile. But keep your physical fitness mobile in the academy; all will become slim. But thereafter, people will put on weight. It's very important that you keep your physical fitness throughout your life because a sound mind lies only in a healthy body. Right. I would just uh, like to add, uh, I completely agree with both sirs. Uh, one aspect I would like to add is uh, like everyone while preparing, even including me, uh, while we preparing, we dream of uh, this civil service and we, we equate with only with IAS. Like we dream to become an IAS, uh, only that to a collector. So we see, mm -hmm. we watch videos, we hear stories, everything like this, I will become a collector, I'll become an IAS. Uh, and photographs in the newspaper every day. Yeah, every day. <laughs> so, and that uh, creates a myth actually, like, and it also creates an illusion, like civil service means an IAS. So we go into, uh, after clearing the exam, we expect that the same thing with all services. Uh, actually, UPSC recruits for 20 other services and... Uh, and each service has its own uh, perks and it uh, gives you opportunity to do serve in its own unique way. So I think it's important to have that at your back of your mind while preparing. So, I mean, it's just not IAS. Yes, we all uh, aspire to become an IAS. That's, that's, that's what we aspire for. But yeah, uh, there are other services which we uh, actually uh, went to. And also one more thing, sir, uh, as uh, Vagandeep sir rightly said uh, about uh, reading after getting into service also, we need to uh, sharpen our axe. Uh, that is uh, really true. We get uh, kind of, we become complacent after clearing the exam and also uh, what we write in answers and, uh, for GS4, say ethics or other things that become, that just reminds an answer, like what we say in ethics, uh, probity, integrity, etc. Uh, or uh, the views that we write uh, for women development, uh, caste discrimination, etc. That remind, just reminds an uh, answer. That shouldn't be a case, I believe, that we have to bring into our real life also after uh, clearing the service also. Uh, I just yeah. add one. Jagdishan uh, uh, rightly mentioned about Jagdishan rightly mentioned about uh, the the um, IAS and the collector. In fact, I must mention to those who uh, are aspiring for IAS just because they see the collector's names or photographs in the newspapers that in your entire career, service career of thirty uh, odd years in the IAS, you will be a collector at best maximum for about three years. So that is not the. I mean, if you are only looking at the collector's photograph and his name in the newspapers and wanting to join the service, you are making a big mistake. Uh, it op gives you an opportunity wherever you are in, in that uh, in the service or any other service to do the service. I mean, that is where, I mean, you are, you should be a first a problem solving person. I mean, attuned to so solving problems, attuned to making life easier 
I mean, I remember some people uh, telling me uh, when you know, I, uh, some of my colleagues went to, some of my friends in the college went to US and I settled there. When I asked them, they said, you know, the, the, uh, the uh, life, you know, living life becomes very uh, much easier here. And so what is, that is what we should make life uh, easier for people at large in this country. And that is your responsibility, whichever service you are. Right. So I think, yeah, though I don't wish to end, there are still 100 more questions and maybe each of you could answer them separately. We have also overshot the time. But I'll just quickly, there's one very profound question. Uh, there's one profound question which I'll take up and which will perhaps all three of you could just give the wrap up you know, to that. Uh, it says that if a student who has achieved AIR rank one and the one who has achieved AIR rank 100, what is the difference in their preparation? So again, which means we come back to the same three tips to crack the IS. If, you, if all three of you could quickly give us, like summarize uh, what we could tell. I think, uh, I think it's, it's, um, it's a question of uh, your commitment. Plus, I think if um, it's quite possible that the person uh, would have fared much better in the interview in terms of... Um, making it into an exchange of views rather than just, uh, you know, question and answer. I mean, you ask a question and answer the question. No. I think if you are successfully uh, making it into a, into a uh, you know, discussion, then your marks in the interview will be much better. Otherwise, you know, reading up uh, for the uh, written examination is quite different thing. And there your commitment, your, uh, your ability to understand and put it in, a, I mean, the, the answer should be crisp and to the point instead of um, going round and round. So, so that, that could be the difference. But then between the first and the hundred, I would like to, uh, I am reasonably certain that the, the difference in marks may not be more than about 20, 25. That's quite possible. So one need not think that uh, somebody who has uh, taken 100 rank is uh, far inferior to somebody who has taken a rank now. <clears throat> and Mr. Well, Pethi already pointed out that not all toppers make the best civil servants. Yeah. I, I will also just like to say that uh, the the two may be having similar level of intelligence and all, but it's only the uh, preparation of the topper might have been better because of which within the same number of words, he would have been able to give more data, more concisely because his preparation was better. He was able to gather his thoughts and put them all in those many words, which another student who is 100 ranks below him he or she would have uh, written. So that's the level of preparation uh, in terms of picking up the knowledge and in terms of writing practice would have perhaps been better for AI rank one as compared to AI rank 100, though they may have both similar level of uh, intelligence otherwise. So that's the only difference. So do your best presentation uh, preparation and you can definitely seek to be on the top. That's what my answer is. Yeah, definitely agree with uh, both. Uh, so, um, I mean, definitely we are one and hundred. Uh, the, the difference is because they have presented well. Uh, the top ranker has Different. presented well and uh, written uh, well. But I think broadly, it's it's again. Uh, yeah, one is luckier than yeah, hundred. Uh, only I would say because it's just matter of few marks uh, here and there. Uh, say if I prepare for five, uh, I mean five topics, uh, and the yeah, hundred has prepared for another five topics. If I get, if I'm luckier, I'll get the all five topics, the questions from those. So it's just that matter of one or two questions. So hardly it matters. And um, even if you ask the AIR one themselves, they wouldn't say that I am confident of becoming AIR one. It's just it here and there it happens. And interview they might perform well. Uh, Hundred wouldn't have performed well. So yeah, broadly it's luck. But yeah, definitely now they are on the rank list. Uh, AIR one has performed uh, much better than AIR hundred overall. Thank you. So thank you, Mr. Gopal Swami, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank for spending so much time on a Sunday morning and answering all questions in detail and with such clarity. Though I, I mean, I really have to draw curtains on this webinar now. So this webinar on decoding IAS, Conquer the Exam, Achieve Your Dream was brought to you by the Chinmaya Academy for Civil Services, a unit of Chinmaya Mission, along with the Hindu Education Plus under its career counseling series. But, uh, so, just allow, so, Maji, just allow me to say something. Um, 
see uh, the, all the questions which are not uh, taken up because of positive time we will be answering them uh, directly we will be sending the reply to them directly yeah. personally sure sure please because a lot of them were repet uh, repetitive also so i didn't uh, really sure, sure 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 so uh, i would like to thank you somaji for uh, conducting it so well and uh, you know very concisely given the constraint of time thank you very much thank you so much thank you sir thank you gopal swami sir thank you gagandeep sir Uh, thank, thank you, you. jagdish sharan thank you sir thank you thank you actually it was an honor for me to be amongst such stalwart personalities i also learned many things i that's the only first reason i attended this thank you sir it was a pleasure meeting thank you. you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.